Amen. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Let's get into this. Tonight, uh, I'm not going to review because we keep stopping at the same place, okay? But we've been talking about the seven ways or really the seven keys of um, how to win in this battle against Satan and demons and victory over Satan and demons. And um, just a, a little, the first key was be aware of the battle. The second key was to rebel against Satan by pushing away and running to God. The third key was to put on the armor of God. We talk extensively about that. Uh, the fourth key was to uh, pray the word. And uh, the fifth key was to, to get rid of false thoughts and puncture those false thoughts that come. Um, now, tonight, I, I really want to spend some time on, on the sixth key. We have seven, so um, I'm going to do something a little different. The seventh key, and then I'll go back to the sixth one. That's what I want to spend my time with. But the seventh key to having or obtaining the victory uh, over Satan and over demons is to don't, number seven, don't neglect Christian community. Don't neglect Christian community. Now, if you would, go to Hebrews chapter 3, 12 through 13. Again, I'm doing number 7 first, and then we'll go back to number 6, because number 6 is pleading the blood of Jesus, and I want to spend time on showing you uh, what the blood of Jesus has uh, accomplished. It's very hard to uh, plead the blood and not know what it accomplished. And I thought today, how, why should I expect for everybody to automatically know what the blood of Jesus has accomplished? And, and I thought, maybe we need to settle back a little bit to go through the scriptures because I got really excited about reviewing, man, look at what the blood has done. Look at what the blood has accomplished. And once you hear it and see the scriptures that confirm what the blood of Jesus has accomplished, oh, man, the devil better watch out because, boy, I tell you, you, you start, the Bible says we overcome him by the testimony of what the blood has done. But if you don't know what the blood has done, how are you going to testify about it? So um, I want to go ahead and do this right here. Number seven, don't neglect Christian community. Hebrews 3, verses 12 through 13. He says, take heed, brethren, lest uh, there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And if you'll go to chapter 10 in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, in verse 24 and 25, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, he says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love uh, and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The, the only point I wanted to make here is a lot of times preachers use this particular scriptures, and I've used it before, Hebrews chapter 10, 25, to say when it says uh, not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, we use it uh, to communicate to people, well, you should be coming in church and you should not forsake church attendance. I'm okay with that, but even more so, it means to neither should you uh, forsake the assembly of yourself together with the community of believers, both in church and away from church. You follow what I'm saying? Because the enemy's probably waiting for you to get by yourself, tend to yourself, entertain thoughts to yourself. And it's really good to have fellowship uh, so that when you see a believer being challenged and maybe tempted to quit or down, that you can speak the word of faith to them. 
and you can encourage them. So the reason why he doesn't want you to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. So he says very clearly here, assemble. Assemble. Uh, don't be an island. Assemble. You, you need to, to, to get around some, I mean, good Christians. <laughs> uh, <laughs> real Christians. People that build you up. Okay? People that you can trust to uh, speak the truth to you in love. So you won't be going around, you know, carrying yourself in a way that's ungodly. We need that. Don't forsake community. Don't forsake assembling yourselves together as believers, both at church and when you're not at church, because you're going to need that. You start hanging, you know, the big problem today is, is, especially with teenagers, just hanging around the wrong people, okay? Uh, and you don't want, you know, your conversation or your lifestyle to be influenced by the wrong people. I told each of my kids when they graduated, I said, the two or three people you hang around with the most is going to have impact, influence on your future. And, you know, it, 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 just like I said, it happens. And so when something wasn't going right, I said, let's, let's look at your friends you've chosen. I said, well, that's why. Look at this. You, 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 you just only picking up what you hanging around. Okay, so let's not neglect community. That's, that's all I got to say about that. I could say a lot more about that, but I really want to get into this tonight. Um, so we're backing up to number six, and this is, this is overcoming, this is overcoming the devil, overcoming demons. And I believe you overcome the devil and demons by pleading the blood of Jesus and proclaiming the victory that Christ got over uh, over on Satan, pleading the blood of Jesus and proclaiming that victory. I, I, I'm not sure if Christians really know the victory that Jesus um, obtained for us. And I'm saying proclaim the victory, and, and, and you don't know the victory. I'm saying plead the blood of Jesus, and you may not be completely aware of what the blood of Jesus has done. Let's start off with these scriptures, and I'm going to share with you 25 uh, 25 things that the blood of Jesus has done so that when you de declare it, you know what it has done. And I got, I got stirred up looking at this, all right? And so let's look at Revelations 12 and 11 real quick. <clears throat> and um, then Colossians 2, 14 and 15 through the NLT, and we'll start there tonight. I hadn't lost y'all in the Bible study. I just got 30 minutes. I got 23 now, so I'm like, you know. I'm going to go over just a little bit tonight, man. I mean, you know. All right, look at this. He says, and they overcame him, him meaning Satan. How? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. I'm interested in how Jesus overcame Satan, and I'm interested in what I need to do to overcome him. Now, see, he's already been defeated, but he's still going to be coming and in, 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 in dealing with us in our heart and in our mind, okay? Uh, now, let's look at Colossians real quick. <clears throat> And I'll start with the list after this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. I'm going to read it out of the NLT. He says, he canceled the record of the charges against us, and he took it away by nailing it on the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Now, what I want to show you is while there is a devil and while demons are real and they exist, I want to show you that through the blood of Jesus, you have victory over every devil and every demon. And if anything shows up where you're being confronted, you, 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 you have to remember you have victory over them. Plead the blood. What does that mean? I am going to declare what the blood of Jesus has already done. See, Satan wants to pick, with, pick at people who don't know what the blood has done. And so things might be going on in your life, and you need to realize, wait a minute, that's been taken care of by the blood of Jesus. If you are ignorant of what the blood has accomplished for you, then you will fall prey to the strategies of the enemy. And the strategies of the enemy is to, is to get you where you're ignorant, to attack you where you don't know. And you could be putting up with something you don't have to put up with. Calm down, I get excited about just thinking about it. You don't have to put up with certain things. The devil, is, he wants to play with your mind. He wants to play with your mind. Your heart is composed of, I wish I had something to write on. I, I won't, I, 
if, if, uh, if like if you, you, your heart is composed of your spirit, your soul, your spirit, your soul together, and then you have your body on this side, right? But you have your soul, which connects to your body, and your soul, which connects to your spirit, but your soul is the target. It's the battleground. So Satan, he really can't mess with your spirit because you're sealed in the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. But he can impact your body and your life, all right, if you don't understand the fact that, that that's where he, that's the battleground for him. And you got to know what you know because he's going to come after you to, to see what you know. And that's why the Bible says he, he seeketh whom he may devour. He can't devour everybody, so he's got to seek you. What is he doing? Finding out what you know. Finding out what you know. He cannot defeat a well-informed Christian. He can't do it. He can only do somebody that don't know nothing. So let's talk about these things that the blood of Jesus has accomplished for. Now, I, I could talk forever on this, and I may go back and try it later, but uh, uh, let's look at this. You're, you're going to overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, watch this, and the word of your testimony. So what's the testimony? You're testifying about what the blood of Jesus has accomplished. Testifying about what the blood of Jesus has accomplished. Every time you proclaim and testify about the accomplishments of the blood of Jesus, Satan is defeated. He ma you maintain your victory over demons and devils just by knowing that. And you've got to proclaim it. But how can you proclaim it when you don't know what has been accomplished? But when you know what has been accomplished and then you start proclaiming it, Satan and demons wither because they know they can't deal with you because of what you know about the blood of Jesus. So we're not talking about overcoming him with the testimony of, you know, praise the Lord. I looked at my, <laughs> I looked at my cabinet one day and uh, praise the Lord and, and I didn't have no food to eat. And praise the Lord, somehow some poking beans got in the cabinet. That ain't what he's talking about. <laughs> but what he's talking about is praise God. I am the righteousness of God by the blood of Jesus. And then he comes and he tries to say, you ain't no good. And you say, I've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And you begin to testify that way. Give testimony of the blood of Jesus and what the blood of Jesus has accomplished. If you understand that, say amen. amen. Now, let's go with it. Number one, I'm going to give you at least one scripture to bear witness with this. Number one, this is what the blood of Jesus has accomplished. This is what you use to, in your testimony. This is what you proclaim. Number one. My debt is paid once and for all. What debt? The sin debt. According to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28, let's read it in the King James and the NLT. Hebrews chapter 9 and 28. Your debt, your debt, your sin debt has been paid. It has been paid. Uh, look at what he says here in Hebrews. He says, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. When I first read that, I said, okay, yeah, I get that. But when I read it in NLT, it, it really came home for me. Here it is. So also Christ was offered once for all times as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. Christ was offered once for all times to take away the sins of many people. All right, question, has Christ been offered? So if he's been offered, have all the sins been taken away? Yes. All right. So he will come again, but not to deal with our sins. Why won't he come to deal with our sins? Yes. Already dealt with it, right? De uh, dealt with those sins. Not to deal with our sins, but to do what? To bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. Jesus came and paid the price. The debt that you were in where sin is concerned is over. Your debt is paid once and for all. How? By the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. When he shed his blood, that debt of sin has been paid. See, you are more sin conscious than you are debt paid conscious. 
you keep talking about your sin, your sin, your sin. And Jesus says, I have taken away your sins. It has been paid for. And so when the enemy comes and even tries to tempt you to sin, you need to tell him, oh, that debt's been paid for. I plead the blood of Jesus on that. Amen? Amen. Number two, by the blood of Jesus, you are justified. Say, I am justified. I am justified. So by the blood of Jesus, you're justified. Romans 5 and 9 says, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath to come. All right? You have been justified by his blood. Say it again. I am justified, I am justified. by the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. All right, so I'm overcoming the devil. Uh, every time he shows up, I'm like, Satan, I've been justified by the blood of Jesus. Every time he comes up and tries to condemn you or accuse you of your sins, hey, I have been justified. You're going to find out later on justification is as if you never sinned. Man. Number three, I am forgiven. By the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven. Look what he says in Ephesians 1 and 7. He says, in him we have redemption through his blood, and through his blood we have the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So by the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven. By the blood of Jesus, I am justified. By the blood of Jesus, the sin debt has been paid once and for all. By the blood of Jesus. It's been handled, amen. Number four, Romans chapter 5 and 9. Number four, I am spared from God's wrath. Christians are always going around, God going to get you, God going to get you, God going to get you. You are spared from the wrath of God. The stuff you read in the New Testament about the wrath of God and how all these things are going to happen doesn't happen to you who are now born again. He says in verse, uh, verse 9, Romans 5 and 9, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be what? Saved from what? Wrath, wrath through him. We say we're going to be saved from the wrath through him. I don't know what kind of wrath is getting ready to happen in this world, but by the blood of Jesus, I have been saved from that wrath because of the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. I might shout here at Bible Center tonight, I'm telling you. Number five. By the blood of Jesus, I am healed. I am healed by the blood of Jesus. So when sickness attacks your, your body, or if the Rona want to try to come to your house, you need to open your mouth up and say, wait a minute, by the blood of Jesus, I am healed. Amen. There's no sickness that's ever touched my body that I didn't defeat it by proclaiming and pleading the blood I mean, even in the midst of a high temperature or whatever, I'm opening my mouth up and I'm declaring, by the blood of Jesus, I'm healed. <laughs> by the blood of Jesus, I'm healed. I chew. See, I'm not looking at this. I'm looking at what Jesus has done. By the blood, I am healed. And eventually, everything got to start lining up because I'm overcoming by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Are you are getting this now? All right, number six, watch this. This is a big one. 1 John 1 and 7. I am cleansed. I am cleansed. 1 John 1 and 7 says, but if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You need to be begin to declare that. I, I, I am cleansed. Even when you do stupid stuff, the next thing you ought to do after you done did stupid, I'm cleansed. All right, now, now see, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. So what he's going to do immediately is saying, he's saying, he's going to remind you of sin. You sinned. You did this. You did that. You got to open your mouth up and you got to say, no, I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Y'all know, and you know you had just had crazy, but this is the faith wall. I am cleansed. You overcome. I am cleansed by the blood of Jesus. No, you ain't. No, you're not. God saw you. Who do you think you are? I know you felt like a fool going to church, lifting your hands up after what you did. How do you respond to the voice of the devil? I have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You think, no, nah, can't nobody do that. That's just playing with God. Well, what about the apostle Paul who, 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 who persecuted the church? who was behind Stephen's death, and all kinds of people went through stuff. Here's what Paul said, I have wronged no man. 
I have defrauded no man. And I'm thinking, yes, yes, you did. <laughs> Three pages to the left, you did it. And Paul said, I have wronged no man. I have defrauded no man. What was Paul doing? He was accepting the fact that he's been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And, and, and the only, only place where that sin exists is in your memory. And you got to, I'm going to show you in a minute, that your memory has ever, even been impacted by the blood of Jesus. But by faith, you got to lay hold of that. And it might, it might, it might take you, it might take you uh, uh, more than one minute. I mean, when, 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 when cancer attacked my body, I, every time, every time the fear would come on me, I'd walk up and down the hallway. Lord, I thank you by the blood that of Jesus, I'm healed. Uh, Lord, I just give you praise right now. By the blood of Jesus, I'm healed. And, and, and that testimony and me testifying out loud and declaring it out loud, it just kind of, it switched everything around. I, I'm, I, I, I know I'm going to be all right. Most people end up dying for the fear of death. But the blood of Jesus has delivered you from the fear of death. Glory be to God. All right, now watch this. Number seven, Revelations 12 and 11. We read this. I have the power to overcome the enemy by the blood of Jesus. I have the power to overcome the enemy by the blood of Jesus. Overcoming how? But he going to put you in a headlock? No, he's, he's talking here. He's speaking here. You got the power to overcome the things he's trying to convince you of, of yourself. He's saying you're no good. He's saying that, that, that you're, you're going to die. He said you, you have the power to overcome him by the blood of Jesus. Please understand this fight. This fight is not a physical fight. It is a fight right up here. The mind is the battleground. You have the power to overcome all of those suggestions and all of the strategy of the enemy to try to get this stuff to digest into your body and into your life. You have the power to overcome it. How do you do that? Revelations 12 and 11, and they overcame him and they overcame him, how? By the blood of the lamb, by the blood of the lamb, and they gave testimony, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. See, we have to overcome him by the blood of the lamb. Ain't no use you speaking all this stuff. So overcome him by the blood of Jesus. Start declaring what the blood of Jesus has done for you. Praise God. Number eight, he said in Genesis uh, 3.13, Genesis 3.13, I am no longer under the curse of the law. Number eight, I, because of the blood of Jesus, I am no longer under the curse of the law. Look what he said in Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. Jesus hung on the tree so that you could be delivered from the curse of the law. So there is no curse that's going to come down you come down on you from your mama, your daddy, from your granddaddy, none of that stuff. It's over with. When Jesus died for you, he took upon all the curse. So don't you sit there and expect the curse of a relative to come on you. No, no, no. There are, there's, there are no more generational curses now that you're born again. Because of the blood of Jesus, there are no generational curses. Glory to God. Instead, you have generational blessings. Woo, Jesus. Number nine, this is Ephesians 1 and 7. Number nine, I have been reclaimed from the enemy by the blood. I've been reclaimed from the enemy by the blood. Uh, this, this verse of Scripture says, in him we have redemption. We've been redeemed. We've been delivered through his blood. Hallelujah. I've been delivered from the enemy through his blood. So every time you go back and, and looking at those old ways, testify. I've been delivered from that by the blood of Jesus. If you lose your temper, I've been delivered from losing my temper by the blood of Jesus. If you go back to some weird thing you used to do, some closet secret, you just say it. I am delivered by the blood of Jesus from this. Oh, I got to have me a cigarette. got to have me a cigarette. I've been delivered from the blood of Jesus. Well, I, excuse me, folks don't smoke cigarettes. I need, I need a joint. I need... <laughs> No, I've been delivered by the blood. Somebody said, well, what's wrong with a joint? I don't want to be enslaved by anything. I have been delivered from the oatmeal cookie that tries to enslave me. I am delivered by the blood of Jesus. You declare that. Testify of that. Amen. All right, I spent too much time on that. Come on. <laughs> Number 10. Number 10. This is uh, Ephesians 2, 12 and 13. I am no longer a stranger to the covenant of promise. You know, before you got born again, you were a stranger to the covenants of promise. 
Now, because of the blood of Jesus, you are no longer a stranger to the covenants of promise. All right, he says in verse 12, at that time you were without Christ. So when you were out, when, so when you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, because you couldn't be a part of that covenant that was only to Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So by the blood of Christ, I am no longer a stranger to the covenants of promise. That simply means that all of those promises are available to me right now. I'm not a strange, I'm not a stranger to those covenants of promise. And I have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. Look at all the things you declare. Look at, look at all the ways you can overcome the devil. But it's all in knowing what the blood has accomplished for you. Amen? Uh, number 11. I have been moved from the enemy's kingdom into the kingdom of God. Colossians 2.15. Love this. I have been moved from the enemy's kingdom into the kingdom of God. Now, I read this to you earlier. Verse 15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. You are no longer in the enemy's kingdom. You are in the kingdom of God by the blood of Jesus. Number 12, Ephesians 1 and 7, again, he says, in, in, in number 12 is, I have gained the unmerited favor of God. By the blood of Jesus, you now have gained the unmerited, unearned favor of God. That means you have gained favor that you don't deserve. You have gained favor that you don't have to work for. By, by, by pure fact of your faith in the blood of Jesus, and listen to me, faith in the blood of Jesus is knowing what the blood of Jesus has accomplished. How can one have faith in the blood of Jesus and they don't know what the blood of Jesus has accomplished? When you understand what the blood of Jesus has accomplished and put your faith in the blood of Jesus, your faith in the blood of Jesus uh, causes you to walk in that unmerited favor. Favor is not fair. God will favor you when, you when you didn't think you deserved it. God will favor you when you didn't know if it was going to show up or not. I declare that by the blood of Jesus that you begin walking in the favor of God. Amen. You declare that every day of your life, by the blood of Jesus, I have favor. I know I'm not supposed to get this promotion. I know I don't qualify for this job. I know that. But I, by the blood of Jesus, have the favor of God. Amen. Amen. Thirteen. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. By the blood of Jesus, you have been declared righteous. You have been declared righteous. He says, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So you, you have to declare you're righteous even in the middle of, of stupid stuff. I remember, I don't know how long this was ago, this guy came to me and we had a counseling session and he, he had a problem with weed and he wanted to stop smoking weed. And, and I told him, I said, All right, every time you think about smoking weed, I want you to say out loud, by the blood of Jesus, I am the righteousness of God. And he laughed. He's like, what is that going to do? I said, no, no, no. Just give me your word that you're going to do this. All right? And he's still laughing. Uh, All right, I'm going to do it. And, 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 and he, while he was there, he said, by the blood of Jesus, uh, I'm, I'm the righteousness of God. He, he said, in so many words, I want some weed. I said, no, don't leave that out. I don't want you to say that. He came back, I think it was about two weeks, and uh, he said, you ain't going to believe this. I said, I will. I'm a believer. He said, I, those urges are gone. He said, uh, I said, what would you do? By the, by the blood of Jesus, I am the righteousness of God. See, the day you believe you righteous will be the day that you want to do right. You, you, you got to understand the game. It's right up here. It's right up here. By the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. You make those declarations by the blood of Jesus. Uh, let's go uh, 14. I got a minute. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5 and 21. Well, that was, that, that was uh, we just read that. Uh, Romans 3, 24 through 25, and this is verse 14. 
I have been justified just as though I had never sinned. By the blood of Jesus, he made it so I can be justified by the blood just as though I never sinned. And then in verse 24, he says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Lord, have mercy. He passed over them just as if you never sinned. Do you understand the power of the blood? Now, somebody says, well, since he passed over, I'm going to go on sin. That ain't, that ain't how that's going to work. When you realize that you have been forgiven much, you are going to love much. It doesn't, you realize you've been forgiven much, so you go sin much. That ain't how that's going to work. Some wrong. You ain't been saved. Some going on. It didn't take. We overcome the enemy. We overcome every demon force that tries to influence your thinking. We overcome it by giving testimony of what the blood of Jesus has accomplished. So I, I gave you 14, uh, and I'm going to give you, you know, the rest of them next week. I gave you 14. Get it in your thinking. Begin to testify. Begin to declare these things that the blood has done. So when the situations arise and he's challenging your righteousness, open your mouth up by the blood of Jesus. Uh, I have been made the righteousness of God, therefore I am righteous by his blood. Satan, the blood is against you. And then he comes up again, Satan, by the blood of Jesus, I have been justified just as... Now, he's an accuser of the brethren. We're going to teach on that next. That's what he does. 24 hours a day, he wants to accuse you of your sins. That's what he does. He does not want you to take advantage of grace. He doesn't want you to yield to the favor of God. He wants you to, to beat yourself up. He wants you in condemnation, shame, and guilt for the rest of your life. And I'm telling you, there's some things that God has prepared for you, and you're not going to walk in them until you learn how to walk from that past. You are, there is therefore now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, you are delivered from, from condemnation. He that believeth in, on Jesus will not be ashamed. Through him, by the blood, there's no more shame. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no condemnation. And yet, we still allow him to come in and try to put that on us. That stuff is over with forever. The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. I plead the blood. You see what that means now? I have faith in the blood. I have faith in what the blood has accomplished for me, and I am one minute and 50 seconds past zero. Did y'all get anything out of that tonight? Now, the key to this is proclaiming. The key to this is you studying it enough so it comes out automatic. By the blood of Jesus, I'm redeemed. By the blood of Jesus, I'm the righteousness of God. By the blood of Jesus, I am healed. By the blood of Jesus, I'm righteous. By the blood of Jesus, I have been justified. By the blood of Jesus, all of my sins have been forgiven and washed away. I am cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You, 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 you want to get to a point where when he attacks you here, this is where he's going to, he's going to attack you here. Every time he's going to attack you here, he's going to, He's going to attack you maybe through some deception you see, some deception mostly that you hear, and then it gets in your mouth and you're speaking deception. This is the battleground. And the stuff that they're, they're, that's being broadcast, so that's, that's not lining up with the Word. You got to stick with the Word if you're going to win in these, <laughs> how these uh, the elder people say, in these last and evil days. <laughs> this is the battleground. The mind is the arena of faith. You will lose it or you will win it right here. That's all the devil got. He's been stripped of everything else. You have the keys of authority. The only thing he can do is make a suggestion. And if you're not wise enough to know what the blood has already done, you will take that suge su suggestion and start treating it like it's real. And then you'll operate in fear and panic and give him access that has already been denied. Everything going to be all right. And sometimes until you can figure out what to say, just say, everything going to be all right. You know, I was dealing with a 
a, a pool situation, some leaks and cracks, and I, I called to find out why they kept putting me down and canceling and canceling. And, uh, you know, I've been working on being patient with people. <laughs> and uh, the, the lady proceeded to try to give me a, uh, I don't know what it was, try to explain to me how the pool business works. And I caught myself. I said, hey, 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 hey. I don't need no pool business explanation. I need to know why you got 50% of my money and I ain't got no service. She said, well, I'll just send you a refund. And I'm like, oh, no, she did not. And I thought, good idea. Because this is garbage. I'm not going to let this crap get in my mind over no leak. I got too much going on in my life to be distracted by the devil using a pool lady to, to get in my head. And I'm finna shut it down, too, to get in my head. It's cold. Ain't nobody swimming anyway. <laughs> shut it down. Send me my money. Hallelujah. Rebobo shalalaba. By the blood of Jesus, all is well. That's how he come. Through all those different situations and stuff that you deal with every day of your life, he seemed to show up. You know, it's hard to find good customer service. Y'all know that, right? That's like gone. <laughs> Hello, I'm having a situation right here. Da, 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 da. Well, what you want me to do? Oh, Lord and mercy, Jesus, help me. <laughs> Get, da, 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 da. Oh, no, she didn't say that. Oh, la, la, la. Look, girl. <laughs> Almost got into it with a, with a lady at the drive thru <laughs> because they normally put, <laughs> I don't know if I told y'all this, they normally put oatmeal cookies in with the, the sandwich. And I looked at her, I said, where's my oatmeal cookie? She said, we don't give oatmeal cookies. I said, you's a lie. And I, I had to catch myself like, because I was getting ready to go there because she ain't got my oatmeal cookie here. <laughs> and then she tried to get smart. Uh, would you like to buy a, a chocolate chip cookie? I'm like, I called Taffy. Listen, you got to help me. I, the Lord helping me right now, and, and I, I'm not feeling him right now. I need you to help me. Community, right? She said, you getting into it with a little girl at a drive-thru <laughs> about a cookie? I plead the blood. She plead the blood on me. <laughs> but you know what? It worked. I got all right, praise God. I just went on home and, 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 and got some lemon cookie or something out of the thing, man. Watch how he comes. Watch how he shows up. It's not worth carrying the weight of somebody trying to rob you of your peace. If it costs you your peace, it's too expensive. Don't spend your peace on no oatmeal cookie. I'm so out of time. Ken, you need to come up because I can't, I can't find the off switch because I'm ready to talk about something else because I don't like the devil. I, I don't like him. I don't like the devil. I don't like him. I can't say I, I, I don't like his mom and daddy because, you know, God made him, but I, I, don't like, I don't like him. I don't like him. If I saw the devil right now, I just, I just, 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 just. <laughs> Praise God. Listen, we're going to get ready to sow into what we just received. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hands and the ushers will get one to you. Of course, as we've been doing offering for all of this time, we know how we do it. Now we can give electronically. If any of you all who are watching online, of course, those of you all who are in here, if you want to give uh, via text, you see the information there on the screen, of course. And uh, you can text the word world changers space and the amount to 74483 or call the number there on the screen, or write to the number there on the screen. Or if you're watching us via online, you can go to worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org. So praise God. As we prepare to give, think about the goodness that God has given to you. Think about where you could have been if it had not been for the Lord on your side, 
where would we be? Lord have mercy. I tell you, many of us can think, and we, you know, some of us don't even have to use our imagination. We know where we were, and we know where we came from, and God has been good to us. He's been so gracious, and every time I give, I always have to think, because I want to think, and say, God, what have you done for me today? It doesn't take me long to think, but I start thinking about his goodness, and you know what, Lord, I remember when, you know, when I, I, I didn't have but a little bit of money, but Lord, you bless me, and you know, Lord, you increase me, and you increase me, and Father, I thank you, and I just bless you for that, and Father, you bless my, my children with health, and Lord, you bless me and my family with health, and Father, I thank you that our house have had, has had peace, and Lord, you know what? You've just been good, and you get up in the day, and you, and you, and you, you ever had one of these days where you get up, and you, you just go outside, and it just feels good, you know what I'm saying? You look at the sun, the sun's shining, and it's all. And then you start thanking God. God, thank you. You know, and see, when we think of the goodness of God, that's the way I want us to be when we give. Think of how good God has been. Because let me tell you one thing. God's not trying to get your money. He's trying to actually get it to you. He's not trying to get your money, but he wants to make sure that you're not in love with it. Can you release it to show that, Lord, I still trust you? You know, I, this, this money doesn't control me. It doesn't tell me, it doesn't command me to hold on to it and I obey it. No, I am a giver. I'm a sore. The Bible says a liberal soul shall be made fat. So praise God. As we prepare to give, we give with that in mind. Lift your offerings up or, or let's enter into prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord, that it is a sacrifice that is a sweet-smelling Savior unto you and pleasing unto you. So Father, we give out of this great love that we have for you that you've already placed on the inside of us. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Father. Receive this seed. Now, Father, we know you're faithful in your word. You will multiply our seeds on and Lord, you will give seed to the source. So we receive that now in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Of course, as we get ready to go out, uh, ushers, you all, you all may want to pass the buckets. Some of you all may want to give as you're going out. We have the, the urns by the door. Why don't you all stand up, and we're going to release a blessing on you. Get ready to release you that you can enjoy the rest of your evening. Praise God. And those of you all who are watching online, we just want to release a blessing. Thanking God for his goodness and all that his blood has accomplished. So lift your hands. May your understanding of the blood of Jesus and all that it has accomplished for you, may you use the blood of Jesus wisely and as a, as a weapon that will defeat the devil in every area of his life. May you operate in the full assurance that the blood of Jesus has washed away all of your sins, giving you the confidence to boldly come before the throne of grace that you may receive grace and help in a time of need. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, be in your thinking, be on your tongue as you proclaim victory. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a good evening on purpose.